Well, Brazil is one of the countries with the highest UFO impact in the world. Cases that occur in the country are among the most spectacular of all UFO literature. Tiago Cicchetti, whose father was a pilot in the Brazilian Air Force, has researched the UFO phenomenon for more than 22 years. He's co-editor and columnist of UFO magazine and also a columnist of the UFO Truth magazine. He's published dozens of articles for UFO magazine and foreign publications, and he's also the author of 11 books. He's the current president of the Brazilian Commission of Ufologists, and he's, he's joining us now to talk about his new book. Welcome, Tiago. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, everybody. Of course, the, uh, the book we're talking about is UFO Contacts uh, in Brazil. Um, it's, a, it's a big book, too. Um, I took a look at it the other day. Um, now, there's, there's just dozens and dozens of cases in the book with about 300 illustrations and uh, all on Brazilian UFO activity. So what makes Brazil such a UFO hotspot? Well, this, this question is very hard to answer because Brazil is a big country, you know, like a, con like a continent. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, a lot of uh, mineral resources and we have natural resources of all kinds. And many people say that because uh, the water we have or the minerals that we have under the ground. So I don't know, but uh, uh, as, a, as a big country, uh, I'm pretty sure that's why we have a lot of cases. All right. Well, let's look at four in particular that are in the book and uh, really captured my imagination. They are the Virginia case, uh, Operation Prado, Antonio Villas Boas and the Yuba Tuba case. So has any new, new evidence emerged on any one of these? Yeah, uh, the Virginia case is a UFO crash in Brazil in 1996, and the aliens were uh, rescued by Brazilian militaries and then sent to United States. Well, uh, the last news that we have is about the one of uh, the soldiers that work at, at Secret Service of the Army in Brazil, and he touched without gloves or without any kind of protection. He touched the creature and uh, he died. Uh, a week later, he got a, a bad, a bad uh, fever and dizzy and nausea, nauseous, and uh, he became, uh, he, he died a week later. And what we know is that only now, years after the case, is that his family got the report of his death almost 20 years, almost 30 years after the wow. case, he never got the report of, the, of his death. And he was buried, buried in, a, in a flat uh, coffee, mm -hmm. it's like a, to prevent uh, radiation or some kind of toxic stuff. And uh, they was buried in, like, in, in something like that. Well, if he, he just died because uh, some kind of infection, normal infection, it w wouldn't be necessary to put in a, in a lead coffee. So it's very strange. And we're still looking for documents. We, we have testimonies of two militaries that participate with the, to participate of the, the rescue of the mm -hmm. UFO and aliens. But they're still alive and they're still in the army and they cannot say nothing. They 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 afraid to say something, and something got wrong with get wrong with with them. Yeah. So what what did the creature look like? What type of alien was it? Well, uh, we, do you have images? Do you have a, a a film or just audio? We have a video or audio? No, we got we got uh, vision. Yep. Oh, okay. So let's show you the version the aliens. It's just like this. Wow. Look at okay. red eyes, uh, big head, skin color, and uh, this tree, you know, horns in, a, in yeah. his head. We don't know yeah. if it's horns or some kind of helmet. And it was very thin and very short. And this one, particularly this one, uh, when it, he was found by three girls, he was like a, very afraid was crouched in, in the ground, so very afraid. Mm -hmm. 
So that case is still ongoing. They they haven't determined anything yet. Yeah, the the, the case is not closed. Well, the army made a report saying that the alien was uh, a person with a, with an, uh, some kind of uh, uh, strange face and, and something like that. This this we call it Mujin, like uh, he he cannot talk. And um, the army report said that what the girl saw was that, was a person. Mm -hmm. But many people saw it, military saw it, and military told us that what they got was not a human at all. Yeah. That, that would almost be um, um, unprecedented in ufology, um, somebody dying from touching an alien. Yeah, I never heard it. Uh, we have a, here in Brazil, we have this case that a, a soldier, a person, touch uh, the alien and got sick and some kind of infection, you know, alien yeah. infection and got dead. But we have another case here in Brazil, uh, John Prestes, that in, back in 56, sorry, 46, he got hit by uh, a light shot by a UFO mm -hmm. that hit him in the arm and uh, he started to get dizzy and sick and literally uh, his flesh started to get out of his bones. Wow. Died as well. Like, like so his, we his to, flesh was being eaten? No, just melting. Like melting. melting. Yeah. Like, 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 like radiation. radiation. Yes, yeah, like radiation. That's it. That's it. Wow. That's in, in 1946. Yeah, yeah. The next one I wanted to look at was um, a series of UFO sightings that occurred in 1977 on the Calaris, a, British, a Brazilian island. And uh, during the out outbreak, the UFOs allegedly attacked the citizens with intense beams of radiation that left burn marks and puncture wounds. What's the update on that, uh, on that case? Yeah, this case is called uh, the plate operation in Portuguese, Operação Prato. Uh, everything started in the 177, October 77. Uh, thousands of, of people of several cities including uh, Colares in Pará State, north of Brazil. Uh, they were have been attacked by the, some kind of lights, mm -hmm. uh, of different shapes of lights. So during the day, during the night, no matter, uh, they were walking the city or sleeping inside this house, this houses, uh, a beam of light, came from the sky, from these lights, the ships, and it hit them on arms, and a woman uh, under uh, the breasts, and left three marks. And all the people that got hit by this, this light, uh, that went to the hospital, the doctor is like, just a nurse, there's no doctor, she was just a nurse. Uh, the people got anemia, so the things, suck their blood mm -hmm. or at least change their bloods. And as we know, one officially one person died uh, because of it, because yeah. of this attack. But we know that much more must be died, died because this attack occurred in several cities in north of Brazil. It's so Brazil is so big in north of Brazil, like Amazonia and Pará, mm -hmm. uh, the cities are so far from each other very far from each other. So uh, if people had died back the time, 97 or 97, 8, we never know. We yeah. never know. Yeah. Do, do you know whether they, uh, uh, people actually made a full recovery? Yes. Uh, well, when this started, uh, the mayor of Colares asked to the Brazilian Air Force to send some some. Uh, officials to investigate what goes what goes going on, and uh, they sent a crew that was headed by Captain Wirange Holanda, mm -hmm. and they they camp in in Colares and uh, in other cities, and they shot more than two hundred photos and twenty five hours of film of UFOs. They filmed the UFOs and they shot and they have photos of these UFOs. Many of these photos are in my book, uh, but the film was never released. 
mm-hmm. we had with the Brazilian government and the Brazilian army and air force in 2013 and 2015. And we, we asked it for another photos mm-hmm. and we, we asked it for the films and they said, well, we don't have it. We lost it. We don't know what is it. But Captain William Jolanda told us back in 1997 that they have films. We, we did, we filmed the UFOs. Mm-hmm. We took photos and we have a lot of reports. And all these reports, more than 3,000 of pages of reports with drawings, some with photos, where it's available on the internet. Yeah, Just yeah. Our, our enforces, enforces, uh against the government to release it is it's a very very amazing case that is still going on because we don't have the photos and the films we're still looking for it yeah is this a case where initially um the government tried to suppress it they didn't want this getting out yes yes it's all, all kind of government uh, does it uh it was a, a secret operation but the case is uh, grew so much, so much. Thousands of people. People are leaving the town. Many of towns became a ghost towns. So there's no, there's the, impossible to hide what what was going on back there. So the government still kept uh, investigation, investigation, uh, but with not without hide it because it's impossible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One of the first uh, alien abduction cases to receive uh, worldwide attention, uh, and Antonio Vilas uh, Boas, um, he stuck to his story throughout his life, despite the uh, skeptics continuing to claim it was a hoax. Um, so, uh, is there an update on that story? Well, this case uh, uh, is very well known around the world. It's the first case of alien abduction before even that Barney and Beth Hill. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, and also the first time that uh, a human being reports that had sex with you know, a, an alien being. So in 1957, Antonio was abducted and then forced to have sex with an alien, a female alien. Wow! And this case was very, very, very well documented uh, with drawings and reports and uh, and the reports of Antonio Villas-Boas, he never changed a word what, uh, of what he said since the beginning. He uh, actually, he never gained some, nothing, money, nothing with that. Uh, he had a, a great experience, an amazing experience, and he kept it, his words, even he died until he's dead. Did he ever describe what the alien looked like? Yes, uh, the aliens were in a, a, a green suit with a helmet with tubes coming out of the, the, the tubes. They never got take off the, the, the helmet with the, a glass uh, in front of it. But the woman was very similar to, to uh, uh, I'm sorry, the alien was very similar with a, a, a woman. A woman. Uh, Human, human race. So it had a lot uh, of. Was, it, it had a lot of human characteristics. Yes, she was blonde, uh, short, you know, with a uh, uh, small eyes. It's like a woman, with breasts and wow. something gentle, like a like a, a woman. Uh, but the the aliens that took him into the UFO, he never saw his uh, their faces. So mm-hmm. I, I'm not. I'm not know how i don't know how they look like but the 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 alien female alien was very similar to humans right okay um and one of the most controversial of uh, all physical evidence cases was the uber case in 1957 where reports uh, of a flying disc exploding over the beach at uber um what's the update on this well this case is amazing uh because it was witnesses Witnessed, but several people on the beach, and many parts of the UFO that exploded, what got, but people on the beach, and some parts of it was sent in 1957, were sent to a newspaper in, in Rio de Janeiro to analyze that. And the Brazilian Navy tried to analyze that and sent to some laboratories in the United States. 
but they had no conclusion. They, uh, they discovered that some kind of minerals like magnesium mm -hmm. uh, were so pure that it was impossible uh, to be found on Earth. So people said, well, it's a meteor, something like that. No, it's not, because the witness said that it was a, 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 a disc, UFO like a, a shape of a disc, like a flying, flying disc, a classic flying disc that exploded. There was, it was coming uh, towards the beach and then start shaking, and explode. Mm -hmm. And some parts of this, uh, this piece of the, the UFO is still, is still here. Uh, we have on one part in Argentina mm -hmm. uh, by Andrea Simongini in the Museo of UFO in Victoria, in the Rio de Vitoria, Argentina. She has a, a small piece of this UFO. Jacques Vallée visited them uh, two months ago, three months ago, and took a, a part of this, of this UF, uh, debris of the UFO and sent to analyze it. And they cannot they cannot discover where it comes from because the minerals are so different that we have here that just must be foreign, like extraterrestrial. Yeah, it sound, sounds similar to a case over here that Linda Moulton Howe has followed very closely over 20 years. Uh, I think you've, you've heard of the, like the bismuth uh, metal and uh, it's, a, it's part of a UFO It was sent uh, in by the uh, grandson of one of the uh, people I think involved in the cleanup um, back in the 40s and um, the um, I mean the minerals involved there are unusual the fact that uh, I think there's three main minerals I think magnesium may be one but the fact magnesium, that they're yeah. th the fact that they're in there together has I think baffled a lot of um, uh, mineral experts so yeah this, yeah. Is, this is a hard evidence we have I'm, I'm just, I just think that this material must be really, really investigated for important laboratories uh, around the world. We, have, we, we must have a hard evidence in, in, in our hands and we are wasting it. Mm -hmm. We have the chance to prove that we have been visited with uh, evidence. Like I know that Roswell <clears throat> as well had the evidence, but this one is, is, is in our hands. Yeah, yeah. Just something about um, UFO cases in Brazil, and they're definitely not boring, are they? They um, they have a spectacular nature to them, and people actually get hurt. Yeah, uh, we have many of these cases in Brazil. I, well, I, this book has more than five hundred pages, have more than three hundred photos or illustrations, and more than a hundred of cases, and. To write this book, I, well, I have more than 600 books mm -hmm. in my house. And uh, to write this book, I researched many of these books, of my, my books. And I found just a few cases where the aliens, you know, uh, are aggressive or cause some injuries in, in humans. We can, we can say uh, what happened in 1940, 1954 in Venezuela, when a, a trooper driver was, uh, was hit by uh, three aliens uh, with, with uh, hard skin, like, like monkeys, little monkeys with a helmet. Mm -hmm. But above it, uh, only in Brazil we have this type of cases. We have in Canada as well, but just that marks on, on, on the chest. Yeah. But in Brazil, we have a lot of type of cases. We have abductions, we have UFO crash, crashes, we have an alien uh, recovery, we have a sighting, we have a photos, we have a plant of types of sightings of all kinds, since a close encounter from the zero, zero grade to the sixth grade. We have, mm -hmm. we have a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you've got if you've got a couple of minutes, can can you let us know? Are there any other cases you highlight in the book? Maybe you know even more spectacular than the four we just talked about. Well, the more spectacular, the the, the four is, is very very hard because they are very good. But I like one that happened here in Brasilia uh, in 1996, where three businessmen are coming are, are coming to Brasilia after some business in in another state. 
and they were followed by a huge UFO, brilliant UFO. And in one, in one, uh, in one part of the trip in Lago Norte, is a neighborhood here in Brazil, Lago Norte, like a North Lake, the UFO just hovered the street over the highway and they stopped it. And they were so afraid they, they, that said, well, we have to pass it. And they passed it under the UFO. Wow. And the UFO kept chasing them until they got uh, the Paraná doll down here in Brazil. And the UFO uh, just hovered the, the water of the doll, just make some waves in the water. Mm -hmm. And one of these businessmen had, uh, had uh, a son that was a professional photographer. And he called him and he came and took 36 photos of that UFO. Amazing photos, very clear photos of that, uh, of that thing. But the, the best is when they are stopping in the road, see, watching the, the, the UFO and taking photos, uh, two policemen stop it. And one of these policemen had a hand camera and they started, he started to film the UFO. For four minutes, he filmed the UFO until the UFO just disappear, uh, accelerate and disappear. And he showed this video for everybody. He showed this, uh, this video in his battalion with um, a lot of other policemen, policemen. Mm -hmm. And they showed to the press and showed to us the followers. We and I love. We, we investigate this this case. We investigate this video, and we concluded that was not a balloon, was not a plane, it was not a helicopter. Well, in 1996, we 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 didn't have uh, drones, so yeah. it's possible. And the shape of the UFO. One of this one of these businessmen said it looked like a cross. Another one said it looked like a, a cylinder. Mm -hmm. And in, one, in, in a photo that I have that is in the book, they will, uh, they will look like a hot dog. It's amazing. Wow. I, I yeah. don't know if they will yeah. shape it and uh, change his shape, but it's amazing. And uh, this case is one of the best documented in Brazilia. It's a very, very good case. It's very, and in, it's reported, re, related in detail in my book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after listening to uh, some of the some of the reports, um, what, what's uh, do you have a, like a percentage rate of people who believe in UFO and aliens in Brazil? Is it high? Well, uh, the people do believe it. Do believe it. Uh, many of the people believe it, but they believe actually. They believe that we are not alone in universe. Mm -hmm. But not everybody believes that they can come to our planet. That's why, that's, that's a bigger reason. Uh, well, I'm convinced that they do. They come from another planet. They have some technology that made uh, possible to travel uh, around the universe and, and visit another planet. Uh, the government here in Brazil is not very interested here uh, in UFO phenomena. Right. We have a lot of bigger problems here, you know. We have a political problems, we have economic problems. We have a, well, we have a lot of problems here. So aliens and UFO are not in a in a government agenda. Unfortunately, we, they are not. Yeah, um, is it is it pushback um, on witnesses from the government or um, organizations related to the government when they report UFO sightings? Do they get discouraged from releasing what they found? You mean men in black? Uh, well, I guess, yeah. I mean, I was just, that was going to be my next question. Do you have the men in black in Brazil? No, we don't, no, we don't have men in black. What we had in Virginia case, for example, uh, the witnesses was visited by some official from Air Force uh, that off, offered uh, to them some uh, amount of money to stop saying what they are saying mm -hmm. and uh, to stop uh, to say that what they saw was, you know, was a mistake. Yeah. And the, the, the girls didn't accept it. Didn't accept it. 
So the last, there's no stress at all. Here in Brazil, I never heard something like that. Of course, if you see something, police or Air Force go mm-hmm. to interview to get some information. But three, it's like a man in black in the United States or in the UK. No, it never happened here. Right. Um, Tiago, are you a one-man UFO crusade in Brazil or do you have like an army in, of investigators? No, we have a lot of investigation. The Revista UFO, UFO magazine in Brazil, we have uh, more than a dozen of uh, UFO investigators. We have a very, very important groups here in Brazil. We have a very fellowship here in Brazil. And we are all together to, to discover and make the government release all the documents. We still have, we, we have it yet, uh, the, the Brazilian Commission of Ufologists, CBU in Brazil, that I'm president right now, that we have uh, an, an agenda with the government to ask for the release of documents of version in the case of Operação, or plate operation, Ubatuba, and Trinidad Island photos. And uh, we have every type of campaign to make uh, the society of Brazil believe that we are not, we have been visited by UFOs and aliens from other on other planets. Okay, I, I recently read a report that says Brazil will be the first country on Earth to accept and embrace official contact. Is is um, do you believe that? Well, what we have is uh, when a pilot sees something in the sky, a UFO in the sky, they call hotel traffic. Uh, they, they, they can report it, officially report it to their force, civilian or military pilot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They report it to the Brazilian Air Force and then it, it is investigation, investigate by the 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 Air Force, and then this report is uh, released to the National Archives. Well, this is stopping in 2014. They stopping to do it. We never got another, another, a new, a new documents of it. Uh, but Brazil, I think we, we are a country of very, very free country. You know, yeah. Uh, People here has a freedom to speech, to think, to say what they want, think what they believe. But the government, as I said, never, never officially uh, said that we are, we have been visited by aliens. No. Yeah. yeah. With your research and your sources, do you think there's any collaboration, say, between uh, Brazilian government, the United States government, the British government? Do you think there's that, that collaboration between world governments? I do. It's a black collaboration, in my opinion. Uh, for, for example, uh, the Virginia case. We got uh, UFO crashes. We got four aliens. And what happened? We sent it to the United States. And why I say, I say that? Because we have testimonies, military testimony that said that the aliens were put in a truck and in the week after what happened in Virginia, uh, black, a black airplane for, from NASA, NASA mm-hmm. in, from United States, yep. landed in, in Virginia, something very unusual because Virginia airport is a small airport. And they landed there. And uh, trucks from army got to the airport and put something inside their plane. And uh, some, some time later, we had the first uh, Brazilian astronaut in the space. Wow, okay. <laughs> so I don't know if it, it was a, a present to us. <laughs> it's, it's good to have friends in high places. So I, I, I'm not saying that that will happen, but a uh, few times, uh, few times later, we had an astronaut in yeah. space. And, and there's, uh, there's four Brazilian a- aliens buried deep underground somewhere in the United States. Of course, on, on area, area 51 or 52 mm-hmm. or 53, I don't know. Yeah. Um, 
Tiago, um, the Brazilian Academy of Ufology, you guys actually have courses on ufology for people. Yes, we do. We have a uh, field guide uh, certification that the people have to, to make a, have to study and make a test to get this certificate. And then we also, like, together with the Revista UFO for Magazine Brazil, led by AJ Javier, mm -hmm. very known in, in all of the world. Uh, we, we make congress and make conference that we show what's going on with the with the ufology in the world and we also try to teach and learn from people yeah. so this is why this this is the way we try to get people involved mm -hmm. um okay last couple of questions um do you have any thoughts on disclosure well i think we we're, we're never going to have a full disclosure I got this book uh, from uh, uh, Nick Dolan, yep. Richard Dolan. Richard Dolan. Amazing book. It's an amazing book. After this, uh, AD, after the disclosure, it's a great book. And they, and they, they show, he shows three options, a full disclosure, a, a half disclosure, and a, a lie disclosure. I believe that they're going to have is a, is a half uh, disclosure. They never going to uh, do a, a full disclosure because if they do so, uh, they will have to admit that they have been lying for mm -hmm. deca decades, decades. Yep. Yep. And what they're going to say uh, to those people that they, accu they accuse it to say that you're, you are a, 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 a liar, uh, you're a, a uh, mental illness, something like that. And the people lost jobs, lost families, lost uh, their lives mm -hmm. for, for a lie, a bigger lie. So I think that they're going to be a, a, a medium, a, a half disclosure. Well, from this point forward, we can, we can say that we have been visited. We can say what's going on. But that point back, they will not tell that was true. They cannot say that. There's no, there's no way. Yeah. I've often wondered if there is full disclosure, um, what will that do for people like you? I mean, will you, will you still be involved in ufology? Of course. Of course. More than ever uh, would be my chance to ask everything that I want. I want to all the documents. I would say it because uh, I'm in ufology because I love it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm in ufology also because... Uh, I have my own questions that I have to answer. That's why I, I research. That's why I read. That's why I write. That's why I, I like ufologists because I, I want to, to answer my questions, my personal questions above all. Yeah. Tiago, UFO Contacts in Brazil is a fantastic book. It'll make a great Christmas present for someone. Yeah, of course. More than, as I said, more than 500 pages, 300 uh, uh, photos, yep. some photos never seen before, never seen before, and 300 photos and illustrations. And Many cases that not known for for out of Brazil. And it's available on Amazon. On Amazon.com. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Well, Tiago, great to uh, have you on, and uh, really appreciate your time. You're a very busy man, um, and uh, let's talk again uh, soon. But, Thank you very uh, much. Dan. Yep. And, but the meantime, if you're looking for a Christmas present, um, if someone in your family um, loves UFOs and loves aliens, uh, UFO contacts in Brazil there at Tiago is holding it up right now. It'd make a great gift. Tiago. Yep. Tiago Cicchetti joining us.